What is up, everybody? Welcome to the video edition of Left My Wallet. I'm Antonio The Promise Thomas. As always, I'm joined by Double G, Garrett Gonzalez. And joining us today, our special guest, the owner, co-owner of Kojo's Toy World in New down the road in New Bedford, Massachusetts. And the man who will be facing the GCW world champion, Matt Cardona, at Beyond Wrestling's American Rana next Sunday, August 22nd. We got Teddy Goods. What's up, Teddy? What's up, Gary? Welcome, oh, yeah. man. We we got we got someone who runs a toy store and is a pro wrestler. That's a first for this show. <laughs> yes, and this this match that they're having, how great is it? Only in 2021, we're having a feud in rest pro wrestling over toys. Exactly. A toy feud. A toy feud. Forget super kicks. Forget apron bumps. No psychology. The purists or the traditionalist would be going crazy if they knew about this feud over <laughs> toys. Yeah, man, don't yeah. tell Cornette. Don't let him. Oh know. yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Garrett, Cor- I, go ahead, Teddy. No, nothing. Go ahead, Garrett. So, Garrett, before we, Teddy has some some toys from his toy store, and he also has some some old baseball cards sports cards from the early 90s which is right in our wheelhouse yes um but since this is a sports theme show before we get going to that uh garrett you went to the giants game last night and uh just tell the viewers here how that experience went first game of the year i i guess well, so it's, I, I went earlier in the year when they limited the fans so I think I want to say there was like maybe less than 10,000 like you maybe you could put up to 9,000 people. It's all based on, you know, the county and, and the state and stuff. So I sat in a vaccinated section, so everyone had to show their vaccination card. This was probably about 2 months ago. And so then just last night as of we're, we're recording this on Friday night, I um I bought some tickets because when I got married last year, the original goal for like a bachelor party light was to we were going to buy some jerseys, go to the ball game, hang out. And obviously it couldn't happen because there were no fans last year. So as a make good, just about a year later, we did it. And, and it was last night. We had to do it this week because my kid, my youngest, goes back to University of Arizona this weekend. So we had to get it in. And there are not that many people there like. I, I don't know what the attendances are like, you know, everywhere else. I imagine in like Florida and, and Texas, there's probably a lot more people because they don't really care as much. But I don't know. Maybe there was like 20,000 people there, 15,000 people there. And you could tell you could, there, there was a little bit of anxiousness in the crowd, right? We are outdoors, so we should be fine. But you could just tell like, you know, people are aware of what's going on and they're a little anxious, though they still want to live their life, and we felt the same way. We wore masks on and off throughout the night, depending on if people were close to us or not. So it's a little bit of a weird thing to go. The Giants looked fantastic. Uh, Logan Webb, who's like they're going to be their probably their four starter it, it, when the playoffs happen, he's throwing like an ace right now. Like in the last two months, only uh, Jacob Degrom has a better ERA than him. So we're talking like this guy's, you know, giving up less than two runs per nine innings. He just came game. off the DL. Uh, so he he was amazing. Ago, I think yeah. uh, the uh, Lamont Wade hit another bomb. Brandon Crawford just got resi- resigned today. Two years, thirty-two million. I assumed he was going, he was going to go for broke in the free agent market, but sounds like he's just coming back for two years. He what about know, how how much of a throw is it to see Chris Bryant? It was cool. He I mean he didn't really do anything, but. Yeah. He's a presence out there. The dude's like six five. <laughs> he's a giant, you know, standing out there, and you know he's a stud. So he, he, it's a, it's a great add to that team. He's perfect. And that team, I, I know a lot of people. I listen to a lot of baseball podcasts. They said because of their age, they're not going to be able. They're some people are still saying it that they're not going to be able to hold on. But San Diego has kind of slipped a little. Tatis comes back this weekend, but um, I. 
you, you can't teach experience and you got experience there with, with the giants, especially with Crawford, obviously, and, and what Posey and Chris Bryant and, um, you know, Kapler for all the things Kapler did wrong in Philly, supposedly he's hit all the right buttons this year. And, and let Lamont Wade, you mentioned him, Lamont Wade and, and Cedric Mullins were two guys I was looking at before the season, one, one in the AL, one in the NL. Obviously, Cedric Mullins is a borderline MVP candidate if his team was contending, but Lamont Wade uh, really been a up and down, you know, between AAA and uh, kind of considered a 4A player, but he's really he's really stepped up his game, uh, I don't know, last two months or so. So, and he's a fun player to watch as well. He's been playing first base too, I think. Yeah, he's been playing yeah. first. He's yeah. been playing outfield. You know, the one thing, Dodgers fans and or just baseball fans in general. And then look, some Giants fans are kind of expecting it to happen, which is the Dodgers are going to catch fire at some point and they're going to make a run, right? The, old, the, the, the thing that Giants fans should be okay with, we only got three more games against the Dodgers. They've, mm. they've played them so many times this year. So three games left for the Dodgers. So it's not like the Dodgers can come into San Francisco and like you know sweep a series and then we go to la and then they, they sweep again like there's only one series left it's the padres who the giants have a ton of games left with so uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun you know that this area uh you know 2014 was not that long ago and so i can see the excitement again the kind of bubbling and it's it's kind of like um it's a thing where it's a little bit of a throwback to sports in a sense because you mentioned Posey and, and Crawford. I'll mention Brandon Belt. Like those guys oh, yeah. have been with the team throughout their entire career. So there's this whole like win one for the old guys kind of thing going on with this team as well. It's just unfortunate that, you know, Bumgarner couldn't stick around long enough to to be on this team. Well, they could have got him back, but um he's not he's not, not the money. same pitcher he was before. <laughs> yeah. Uh Teddy. You are a. Uh, you used to be a big sports card collector. Oh yeah, uh, we, we've never re- we've never really talked sports <clears throat> before, but you have some sports cards that you gathered up, and you got an I interesting do. you got an interesting story about one of them. Uh, and Teddy, one, Teddy oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah 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 no no no. <laughs> Teddy and I Teddy and I go back like twenty years. Uh, I would say like seventeen or eighteen years. So. Um, Teddy, when did you start? What year? Uh, like uh, I started right around probably like 2000. Okay, so I was January, yeah. January 2001. So yeah, that was Teddy. That was right about me. Teddy's used to be the ladies' man, Gregory Edwards, <laughs> and he was in the score. Were you in the score? I was. You were in the yep. score. Okay, I want to bring that up later towards the end. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you got some interesting cards, and we want to kind of. Um, we want to kind of set the stage here for you to show off some of these, these toys and these cards with some interesting stories you got. Sure. Uh, I just uh, went upstairs. I recently, uh, my, my parents have really been on my brother and I to like empty all of our stuff out of their attic and basement. And uh, I went to their house about a year ago and got my like go-to box of cards. I was really into like baseball cards back when I was in probably elementary and middle school, late eighties, early nineties, I would go to all the local card shows and all that stuff. And, uh, I just grabbed a handful. And as, uh, Antonio Thomas was saying, I uh, met Dikembe Mutombo at a card signing. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I just thought it was funny. Like it was at some, you know, like, actually, I think this was at the mall, the Swansea mall back when like malls would have card shows. Um, yeah. 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 There it is I just, right in the bottom. There it is. Autograph. Yeah. So I uh, yeah, I'll let you guys see one more time. Uh, hold on, the glare is probably that's good right there, right there. Yeah, yeah. Does it say um, it's just his name, or does it say two? It says uh, nope. It just says number fifty-five Matumbo. And what year oh. was this? What year was? Oh this? God, the card is a ninety-two. So it was probably like ninety-three, ninety-four, if I had to guess. Wow. Yeah, prime that's Matumbo when, years. That's when they beat Seattle ninety-four, where he was on the floor like. Couldn't yeah. they beat him in the first round? So. But uh, I'm just trying to see if I can find anything else cool that was in here. There's a Michael Jordan card where he's like uh, on the White Sox there. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like a, 
It's like a weird bootleg promo card. Uh, Scotty <laughs> Scotty Pippen rookie card. Oh, uh, there we go. A ton of Mike. I just got tons of like Jordan cards from the '80s, apparently. But you can't forget the uh, the hometown boy, Larry Bird. Where is he there? Yeah, stickers. Is it? No, that's the yeah. All Star card. There it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, that's uh, like the perfect time to collect basketball cards. <laughs> little Joe Montana. There we go. Oh, that's an '83. Is that in '93? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, wow. it is. Wow. So I go back. Uh, you know, I don't want to bore you guys with showing too much stuff. No, but no, here's no. The most... That's what this show is for. It's for. It's... Here, here's the most important one: a little <laughs> league baseball card of myself. Uh, <laughs> let's see, four feet eleven inches, eighty three pounds, nineteen ninety three. <laughs> um. But, uh, yeah, going back to what you are saying about the card shows and stuff back in the day, I was really a diehard sports collector. But, Double G, I have to ask you this question. Growing up, my favorite baseball team wasn't the Red Sox. It was the Oakland Athletics. Wow. And I was wondering, when you, while you were talking about the Giants, is, like, who's the most popular team, you think, in California, of, like, the California baseball team? Uh, nationally, it's the Dodgers, for sure, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Giants would definitely be second, though. Um, the Padres and the Angels, I'm not sure. They're both kind of like in the shadow of the Dodgers. I forgot about like, the Padres. Like wow. to, a, tr to a pretty tremendous degree, actually. And then the yeah. A's, the A's, the, depending, you know, if, if this was, if we're back in the 80s and the early 90s when, when they were good, yeah. I would put them ahead of the Padres and the Angels. But now I'm not sure, even though they're still, they're a really good baseball team currently, but still like, they they have so many problems with that city. The fan base is so frustrated, and you know the management they they're just they've been trying to get this the stadium thing going, and the city's just kind of like, look, you know, we don't need you as much as you think that we need you. You know, we'll exist without you. We're Oakland, like we're like an actual city. So, yeah, I I, I say I would say Dodgers clear number Got one. It. Giants would be number two though for sure. Yeah, I've only been to two professional baseball games, and the first one was 1990, Red Sox against the Oakland A's. Oh, that might have been at that one, too. Oh, I have God. the ticket. I have the ticket, and it's autographed by Conseco, and it says Jose. He signed it for me. Like I went how there earlier. You, how, w w when did he sign that for you? It was you? 1990. Really? I have the so, ticket upstairs. It's like April something, 1990. I'm sure I could find it. Somewhere. He signed it at the game? He signed oh, it like so we like when they were like doing batting practice or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. we were over there and like there obviously was way less people on the Oakland A's side waiting for autographs. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I was with my I was with my cousin and he signed both of our tickets, Jose. And you yeah. were obviously a Bash Brothers fan. Yeah, right? yeah, Jose Canseco so, yeah, yeah, was yeah. my favorite. He was like the ultimate warrior of Major League he Baseball. Was. He right? really was. Absolutely. <laughs> he, they, uh, they, their careers are. Like, if you could compare a baseball player to a wrestler, G Garrett, I think we talked about this on the Hall of Fame episode. Yeah. We made comparisons to wrestlers and yeah. baseball players, and it was Ultimate Warrior and Jose Canseco. <laughs> That's so... really funny. <laughs> What's up with Jose? Is he still a lunatic just doing his thing? He's he's charging people now. I think it came out last week, charging people um, for a follow on Twitter. <laughs> I think oh, it's $79. Hey, what do you – just said, and to put things in p comparison, I don't really know what like a pro baseball player makes these days, but like in comparison, what do you think like Jose's contract was back then compared to like a top guy now? Is it like well, 10 times more or? No, at one no. point he was the highest paid player when it was 89 or 90. I think he had a five year, $25 million. Deal. Okay. So they were getting so, pretty serious money back then too. Yeah. So Cause when, what, when yeah, bought, what, ha what happens he, is, is in right around that time in the late eighties, um, all of a sudden you would see these new contracts like Kirby Puckett, three million a year, oh. Ricky Henderson, three point five million a year, Jose, four point four million a year, Will Clark, four and a half. Like all these guys were just sort of just doing like a little bit above the next guy to keep the market going, right? Because like Kirby Puckett's like first, and then the next guy comes in and they keep signing for a little bit more. And then the next guys are going to come in and sign for a little bit more. So there was like this time period where the, the, all of a sudden the salaries were like in the 3 million, 4 million range. And then, you know, now they're in the, for the top guys, they're in the 30 well, million remember, range. I think so, when yeah. Bond signed with San Francisco in 93, it was like seven was years, seven or eight. 46 million or yeah, something. Yeah, I, I kind of remember that. That was when I was starting to get out of it. Yeah. Um, hey, but I, I did that. a, um, 
There was a celebrity boxing back in like 2010 in Springfield. Dude, I did one of those. <laughs> did you do? Was it one of the ones Heresy ran? When I did it, the Octomom boxed, and so oh, did one wow. of like the Bonaduce brothers. The Devil's Reject boxed the Bonaduce brother. Okay, there was one. I was at the one in Springfield, like Malonis and Max Bauer. Yeah, I wasn't at that one. Jose Canseco was there and Michael Lohan, Lindsay Lohan's father. I had heard about this. I think it was either before or after the event yeah. I did. It was like outside of a strip club. Or Canseco has crazy twitches. He he goes like he goes like that. Like he was but he was Holy super God. cool. I went right up to him and shook yeah. his hand. Yeah. And then um there was another one. I was in Japan, but I think Heresy wrestled Screech. Oh, that was so. There was a few of them. Yeah, there was okay. a few of them. Then. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that show was crazy. Octomom. So, so it looks like Gary, you are you opening up? Yeah. Some by the, the way, uh, I'm gonna op open a few packs here because I got 16 of them to get through before we're done. Okay. Um, I'm so, opening just just so people know. I'll actually add our screen here, um, so that everyone can see. I tweeted this earlier today. But I, because um, because of Target, I bought a bunch of retail uh, blaster boxes, and then this is a little bit bigger than a blaster box um, of tops too. Because I always like the top stuff, and it's pretty easy to get compared to a lot of the other stuff. And it's is that a hobby affordable. box? It's not. It's technically not. It's a retail box, um, only available packs. at Target. Yeah. Sixteen, 16 pack, packs, sixteen lot. cards in a box. Um, exclusive Juan Soto highlights card, just kind of like the, the the cell. So, uh, so yeah, so that's kind of what I'm doing. And I'll uh, as we chit chat, I'll just flash the cards that are actually kind of interesting in our fourth screen here. But let's move uh, let's move Thomas back to the top here. There Teddy, I want to ask. Let's talk about uh, Kojo's Toy World. When did you sure. you co own it? Correct. I do. It's my cousin and I. Okay. Yeah, because Teddy is Teddy and I have worked with each other. I don't know how many tons of times. Um, and Teddy is like a jack of all trades. He does a little bit of everything. He's a hustler and he works his ass off. And um, I know you and like Sean Burke and all those guys, you guys have always loved toys, big toy collectors. So this is like kind of the culmination of your love of toys. Talk about the toy store. Talk about how long it's been open and what sure. makes it, what makes it unique, um, sure. you know, the, what makes it unique to, to being Kojo's? So uh, basically, uh, to go back, our grandfather and our uncle had a toy store back in the 80s, and it was called Joe's Toy World. And uh, they were super into collecting toys and all that stuff. And my cousin, who just over the years has gotten the nickname Kojo for Cousin Jay, I think people started calling him Kojo, and it stuck. Um, he had been toying with the idea of a toy store, no pun intended, for probably about five years now. And uh, I had my eye on the location that we're actually in. I said, hey, I know the spot when it opens up. Like, this is where we need to do it. And uh, it just happens to be, like, next door to my buddy's, like, record store. And there's, like, vintage clothing next to it. It's just kind of, like, the perfect area because there's so many other, like, likely things around it. Um, so fast forward, and the store became a reality. And we were trying to think of a name. And my cousin really wanted to have something to do with like me or the wrestling, or he really wanted me to put my name on it, which I told him, I said, dude, outside of this area, no one knows who I am. And, and two, I didn't want to put my name on it. So we toyed with the idea of calling it Joe's Toy World as a tribute to my family who used to have a toy store. And my uncle, I think was kind of like, ah, like that's my store. Like I came up with that <laughs> name and yeah, which is funny, but um, I thought of, hey, what about Kojo's? It, it, it means two Joes, you know, like our grandfather times two. And then I just said, it's your nickname. And to be honest, I don't really want my name on it. I just think it, it's cool and it's quirky. Like, you think a toy store? And I already knew, like, we had, my cousin had great, my cousin's a real, like, toy guy. Like, he's like, he's like Sean Burke. Like you said, he still buys toys and collects them and displays them. Whereas... I'll buy something once in a blue moon at a yard sale. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I had it 30 years ago. I'll throw it in my little cabinet. You know, you were you were um, a wrestling wrestling toy collector, right? Wrestling. Yeah, but not to the extent of those guys. Like sure, I collected sure. toys as a kid. Once I got older, I kind of was like, not like Bacabella and those guys. No, yeah. no, 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 no. I would more like if I could find them at a yard sale. I thought it'd be funny. I'd buy them and throw them in a bin in my basement. Yeah, I, yeah, never yeah, really, yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't have a shrine like Bacabella. <laughs> but um. 
So uh, fast forward to the toy store and my cousin right off the bat had like just grand visions of like, we need slime and fluorescent paint and we want people to walk in and we don't want it to be white walls and corporate. We want people to walk in and be like, holy crap, this is like nauseating. There's so much fluorescent, you know? And from that, like I said, dude, what better like name than Kojo, Kojo's Toy yeah. World. And we, yeah. and we came up with a wild looking logo and just, and it's a wild, really, it's a wild looking store. You got like a, a yeah. castle gray skull entrance. You, you I think had... it's the largest, we, we think it's the largest castle gray skull uh, replica entrance in the world actually. Wow. So we were talking about hitting up like Ripley's or like Guinness Book of Records, but our friend custom made that for us. He shaved it all out of foam. That should, Drew should use that for a beyond show as, or someone Dude, should it, use it as it's a, crazy. like, you know, welcome fun, to fun, a, Eternia or something. Funny story about that giant Castle Grayskull in our store. I had a guy come in today who's been staying in his in Boston um, with his family. He's from Iceland, and his son was getting treatments in Boston, so they come down here for like two months at a time every couple of years. And he told me he Googled us, and he was staying 130 miles north of the store, and he drove down there today because he saw that Castle Grayskull statue. Wow. And he bought a bunch of stuff. He was super cool, you know, really nice guy. I gave him some t-shirts and stuff. I'm like, take him back to Iceland, you know? It was yeah. pretty cool. But, like, we've only been open since March. We opened on 316. We wanted to, to get on the Kojo ban uh, the Co Stone Cold bandwagon, so we did Kojo 316 shirts on that day. And, dude, it's awesome. It's been overwhelming. Like, we're, we're, we're so lucky and so thankful. Like, I'm not bragging or anything, but I know, like, small businesses take two, three, four years to make profit. Like, we're already out of debt. You know, like everything, everything in the store is we now own and is paid for. And I probably shouldn't say that because now people are going to want discounts. But, <laughs> but, but what, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of tooting my own horn. We had a plan. No, no, no. You, it and, yeah. You know? No, on the Instagram all the time, it's, you know, we got this load of these rare. You had yeah. sectors on there. Yes, we did. Like, we like, had, we had, we had the guy who create sectors came to our store. Yeah, like yeah, that was. We found out about it, and he came and paid us a visit. It's crazy. I remember like, though, like, yeah, the Coleco made those in like '84, '85, like rare, rare things. But you do the thing with the. Didn't you have like a slime machine? Come get slime that code. We, we had a something? thing. We were like, yeah, we have yeah. like fake slime dripping from the ceilings and stuff. Sure. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's but, it's an it's an experience. Our our goal yeah. was to make it a destination, not a store. We want people from an hour away to say, "I got to go see this giant He-Man replica." You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> that that's kind of we want people to walk in and like even if people don't buy stuff, which honestly we're we're pretty lucky. Someone always we sell posters, pins, T-shirts. So if you're not into toys, you can grab a little something and support the cause, kind of. So we've been really lucky. We sell cards. We sell garbage pail kid cards. <laughs> And we sell also like '80s wrestling cards. We sell loose cards for a dollar, and people love them, man. Like the stickers, that's, you know, they just that's the, like the dollar bins, like of common yeah. cards at card shows. Yeah, that's because that's what five, six year old kids exactly, like exactly. Dad will be like, "Oh, hey, you love like when you're that age. Even now, you love looking through cards and just that's 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 what I do with them." The the, so when we buy like lots of toys every now and then someone will throw us cards, you know, or there's cards floating in the box because it's some kids from 30 years ago and all the baseball cards and sports cards, the I just take them all. And that's what I do. When kids come in, I throw a few cards in every bag. Like when they buy, wow. they don't even tell them, you know, just yeah, who knows? I could be throwing them gold. I mean, I doubt it. Most of them are pretty dinged <laughs> up and you know what I mean? But I don't even look. Yeah. I just, here you go. You know, it's, yeah. I'm not, I, get, I get the cards for free. Hey, take them, you know, so. I have sort of a serious question. Um, sure. and this will be the only serious question, <laughs> uh, so, so we can have some fun, but when I go, so, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, there was Toys R Us, there was KB Toys. Now it's literally like Target and Walmart and Amazon. And so that whole concept of being able to go buy toys is, is so much different than it was when we were growing up. And has that, because of that, because of the distribution, has that changed your business to a degree? Because, like, I don't know, um, you know, I don't know, like, if you guys have, like, a lot of newer, you know, newer things or if it's more, you know, sort of collector's kind of stuff. But just the new sort of market of, you know, Toys R Us, I, I think they're supposed to come back, but they're, like, obsolete. That's what they're saying. Yeah. So, basically, there's, like, two sides to that. There's, I guess... 
people now like if a toy is from 2002 or b- before it's considered vintage you know what i mean if i get if we get a toy from 2000 or newer i think that's like newer you know but yeah, yeah. the 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 really like newer toys the toys that are from the last five years the only stuff we really buy is wrestling because wrestling's just so hot it sells um so stuff like that like i'm not going to go hang out at target and and hope to scalp a box of figures and, and mark them up five or ten dollars and gouge them i know there's a problem with that and with cards you know um but people will come in and they'll say, hey, I got 20 figures in a bag. They're all from the last like year or two. Like, you know, I'll sell them to you for 10 bucks a piece and then I sell them for $20 or something, you know, like um, that's the only way I really get like more recent toys. But I think with all the like you said, the only options being like those uh, mainstream department stores, which are usually cleared out. The more people are like finding out about us, I think it's helping us because one, we have cheaper alternatives, whereas if you go to Walmart, or Target, any action figures, pretty much twenty dollars and up. Where well, you can come to our store and get a Ninja Turtle for five bucks, or or a Ghostbusters toy for five bucks, and we clean it and repackage it, and you know. But you can also come in and you can buy that two hundred dollar Transformer you've only seen online and you've never held in person, or I never pulled the trigger on because you, you know, some spend two three hundred dollars on a fragile item online. You might be a little hesitant, whereas now you're at the store and you're looking at it and you're like, wow, here it is in front of me and. You know, we mark it down 10 or 20 percent cheaper than you can buy it on anywhere else. It's kind of we're all about like moving the product, keeping it going. So whatever something's selling for, if it's selling for 200 bucks, we mark it 175. We just want it to go, you know, kind of. So. so we we have a common link here um, between Garrett and and Teddy or oh, also myself. It's Chris D. Petrillo. You, Teddy, do you know Chris from? Uh, no. Okay, so Chris is from Rhode Island. He's the guy that runs, or he's he works at Figures Toy Company. Okay, that, yep. That does the indie wrestling figures and did the ROH figures and whatnot. Yep. So he also does Garrett. He does the the um, Karate Kid show mm-hmm. with you as mm-hmm. well. So uh, Chris is always at the any fan fests that are in this area in New England. Got it. Like Joe yeah. Bruins Hall of Fame, Chris is always there. So I don't know if if you've talked with Chris about getting any of those figures. No, but I'd love to connect to them because we have. So it's funny you were talking about getting new toys in. The only new toy we've ever like ordered, and we actually picked it up because it was local. Is um, do you remember the toys called Boglins? They were like puppets you put your hands inside, and they looked like I don't know. They look like monsters, or whatever. But the same guy who made Sectors, he invented those and. Right. We ordered like, I don't know, 12 of them and we picked them up from like the factory in Connecticut or something. But that's like the only new toy we've like ordered. We're starting to dabble now. We we ordered one of those new WWE rings that like Zach Ryder's yelling at everyone to buy. Have you oh, seen is that those? the one with is that the one with the ad uh new generation entrance? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. Diesel with the diesel figure. Yeah. But <laughs> hey, it's, it's, it's supposed to be like really like well made, right? It's like yeah, not, but it's, it's, 275 bucks yeah, i yeah, hope yeah, it's yeah. Lovely, you know yeah. so so we bought a couple of them for the store i don't know if we're gonna sit on it or just sell it or what we're gonna do but you know people are but they did like a, they did like a gofundme for it or something yeah they did they? Five, five, so if you're one of the if you back it by a certain date and they get all the backers they unlocked like a doink the clown figure or something or a macho <laughs> macho maker. hey on a side note that baseball card's really cool it looks really vintage like the layout on it yeah, so I was gonna ask Promise about this. So Luis, Ro- uh, Luis R- Robert, or is it Robert? I think it's it's Luis Robert. Okay, so this is a in the tops two. It's a tops chrome, and it's a refractor. Um, but the the design is from like yeah, I think the design has got to be from like the seventies or something, right? Yeah, so that's like, like the that's like the Topps Heritage ones. Uh, I, sh- I showed on the last show or the show with John, where it's from 1972. Mm-hmm. That let me look up 2021. In tops. While I had a ton. while he's doing that, I actually had a, another question for you, which is sure. Um, you know, WWE obviously. You go to Target, there's a whole section and there's tons of figures. Right next to them, maybe a sliver of <laughs> AEW figures. Yeah. But the AEW figures sell out very quickly. Like if you go to a Target, uh, sometimes, you know, you may see a couple of Rehos or a couple of Young Bucks from the yeah. uh, yeah. a couple of seasons of Unrivaled. 
you can't what, see what, that. It's, what a, it it's four dollars. Ah, but it's a it's, Ding. that's a <laughs> in it, the it dollar bin nice. for the kids. <laughs> it looks nice. Um, so when it comes to what figures people are looking for at your store, uh, are they mostly still looking for WWE figures or are uh, the AEW figures hot? No, they're hot. People ask for them. We just don't get them often because the only time I get them, like I said, is if somebody sells them to us. So the fact they're so new, I feel like not many people are selling or if they are, they want to gouge. So, yeah, but I, I do think I was just talking to my cousin today about potentially starting to order those as they come out. Cause, you know, whatever. It's, it's we're a toy store. We should have some of the hot toys, especially wrestling. He agreed. Wrestling's our number one seller. So if we're going to commit to buying anything new, it's probably going to be wrestling. This Teddy, this seems like not only owning the toy store and being in the store dealing with customers, but the, like you mentioned, going down to Connecticut or searching, driving here to pick up these toys. This yeah. it's, this sounds like an incredibly fun journey, almost like, you know, those first couple of years in indie wrestling where every you're exploring and everything exactly. is, everything is uncharted territory. And it's like, Oh, let's hop in the car and let's drive to Pennsylvania and get this toy. Or we're going to go pick up a, um, you know, the, the, the Boglins down in Connecticut or whatever. Yeah. It, sounds, yeah. Yeah. it sounds like it's very much like that, you know, being on the road, kind of much like, oh yeah it, like, it's a gamble like, like yeah like someone would tell you we're going to do the show in pennsylvania or it's at a fair and you think like oh my god there's going to be thirty thousand people then you get there and they're like it's at a fair during the tractor pulling the cow race so nobody's <laughs> right. nobody's gonna watch you guys but uh <laughs> but it, it's kind of the same thing when somebody says hey my my boyfriend's brother's cousin's aunt has an attic full of toys you got to check it out it's wicked good stuff it's all vintage and then you get there and it's like six toys and they're like from five years ago and they're broken and you know what I mean? Like, so but then there's the flip 22 where you go to someone's attic and it's like one of a kind rare eighties, seventies toys. And it'll just blow your mind, you know? <laughs> so there's a Cabrian Hayes rookie. Um, he's been, you know, we mentioned him before on the show mm -hmm. talking about, uh, being a uh, before the season, being a rookie of the year favorite for rookie of the mm -hmm. year, but he's really been quiet and he's, he was supposed to be the only bright spot on Pittsburgh and it's been Brian Reynolds so far, Bobby Dahlback. There's a, uh, kind of, he's been the problem at first base for the Red Sox this year. And then what do we have here? Is that trout? Oh, oh that really is. That Red Sox card looks just like a 1986 Topps. It, is. it does. Yeah. yeah. They Topps does that. They do uh, different years, various yeah, they, years. They just like do. reprint yeah. with like the current players on like the old design for the their Topps. Kind of Topps 86 and those 1983 Topps with yeah. like the Tony Gwynn rookie, the, the, um, the Wade Boggs rookie. Those are beautiful. Those are two. I think uh, the '86 cards. I have Jose Canseco's rookie. Yeah, was uh, he and was I, a rated, traded, uh, traded. Ra traded card. Yeah. yeah, and then I and I have a Roger Clemens. I remember from that one. Eighty-five. Like that. Yeah, eighty-five yeah. was Clemens. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, Teddy, you have some toys here that are kind of unique to to Kojo's and that people can, we're going to give you the information if people can order, because you obviously do mail orders, correct? We actually have only done one piece via mail. We sold it to a guy in the United Kingdom, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we haven't dabbled yet, we're, but we're going to, we're just a two man army, but we agreed. Maybe we're going to kind of wait it out until the new year, see where we're at. If we have some real big ticket items that haven't moved or no one's inquiring about me, we might go online with them. You know, if it's rare or desirable stuff, because right. there's probably some guy in Iceland right now who will pay premium price for that transformer. Whereas somebody local doesn't, you know, is like, Oh, you're crazy. You know? Yeah. 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 So what do you have? You have some stuff. Uh, I just grabbed a couple of stuff. things. Uh, I, I bit, please. One of them better be a brick house Baker action figure. Uh, no, but I have something close. This is pretty cool. I, we just got this at the store the other day, too. Oh, it's an wow. Original... That's amazing. Wow. Right there. So, so it's from... What would that have been like 82, 83 or something? Yeah, 1983. I'll show you guys the back, too. It's pretty cool. Wow. That thing... So a friend of mine was bidding on that probably 
six, seven months ago. And he said it got up to like almost three hundred dollars, and he so, was he was done with the bidding. Yeah, so funny. A guy came into the store with it, and he he was actually selling it for like his aunt or somebody. I don't know. And um, he wanted about half of that for it, you know. And he had some other like trinkets that he sold us, and I bought them. And I messaged a friend of mine about the Rocky, and he had said um, it's probably worth about two fifty, maybe even three hundred. He said. Uh, and I, the funny thing was, I have, I used to have this toy when I was a kid. I still have it all broken and missing the gloves. And, but I have a picture with myself and Kojo at Christmas opening. He got like Apollo Creed and I got this. <laughs> wow. And, and it's us with Santa Claus, who I think is my dad or his dad at the time. <laughs> and we're sitting on his lap holding the toys. So as the guy was leaving, I had it in the back of my head, well, it's going to be worth probably double what he wants for. And I'm just like, I've, I, have, I haven't bought a toy for myself since the store opened, like nothing, you know, for my Baca Bella shrine. And um, the guy was walking out and I just was like, I'm buying it. So I gave him what he wanted for it, which was like 120 bucks, I believe. And um, I, I, after he bought it, I was like, why did I just buy this? But then I was like, <laughs> I, I was just like, ah, it's so cool. And down the line, if I ever needed to unload it, I would get my money back for it. But I just, I've never seen this in person. Like you said, I've seen a few online and they were quite a few bucks. Plus um, there's meaning and, and stuff. Well, that's like that. it. The, yeah. the nostalgia. Now I'm hoping, knock on wood, that now my, the one my cousin had, you know, they'll come together. We can reenact the picture, go to the mall at Santa and take a picture with them. <laughs> that could be the Kojo's Christmas card, you know? <laughs> but when, um, when you're pricing stuff, are you just yep. kind of using eBay as a guide? Like, like so how- it goes, it, it goes both ways. Like if it's something I sold in the past before and I can already gauge like what it's going for, I can just zap it or I can go on eBay. Or if I get something exceptionally cheap, like I buy it, let's say I clean out uh, a house and I fill up my car and it's 500 bucks or a thousand bucks. And there's a thousand individual toys there in my head. I'm like, well, I paid a dollar a piece. I could just mark these Ninja Turtles five, ten bucks and blow them out of here, or I can look them up on eBay and see which one's thirteen and which one's right, twenty four. Right, right. So it kind of goes both ways. Between my cousin and I, I feel like we have a decent eye to be like, oh, this might be worth something. I'll, I'll double check or I'll look. But the other stuff, if we're getting it cheap, we just kind of wing it and just mark it cheap and just kind of move it. You know, I mean, some higher end stuff. This is the only other thing I was going to show you guys, but these are pretty cool. These are Jason Blade would love these, but they're two original. Um, oh wow! It's the Ultimate Warrior. I know it's a little blurry there, but now does he have a different uh, face paint on, or is it? Uh, I don't think so. No, it's the regular. So, I mean, so those are from the that's from the first series that came out summer exactly. in nineteen summer in nineteen ninety. Correct? Yeah, it's good. Yep, nineteen ninety. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. But uh, oh, wow. same thing. We were nice. we, we were cle- we were cleaning out a guy's house, and I'm talking thousands of ca- hundreds of thousands of cards. Let's talk cards for a second. Wow. Yeah. Wayne, several Wayne Gretzky rookie cards, like gradable Michael Jordan rookie cards, uh, Mickey Mantle cards. I mean, mind blowing stuff. And I I don't know enough. I mean, the guy knew that they were obviously of some value. So and, and he was a friend of mine. So I'm not trying to run off with them and. He's not trying to give them away either. So I called a couple of people I know who like deal with cards, especially. And one person came and on the spot gave him a thousand dollars just for the Mickey Mantle. I guess he said it was worth like double that. And the guy agreed to sell it, but he still has all the cards. Okay. He's waiting. We're going to, we're going to talk yeah, after this. That's fine. Um, <laughs> but anyways, his father had thousands of toys in the package, all kinds of Batman, Superman, wrestling, kiss, just everything. And we were just making piles. He was like, just make a pile. He goes, whatever it's selling for on eBay, give me like 25 to 50% of that, you know, depending on how much you guys buy. So we're just making piles. And at the very end, I found a comic book box and I opened it and there was like 10 of these in there unscathed. Like, wow. And the one that I sold, I told you we sold one toy in the United Kingdom. It was a Macho Man, the original Macho Man figure that was wow. in here. Yeah. What, so. what is what is your your most expensive piece in the whole toy store and what is probably the most rare piece that uh, i guess know... it's probably both like uh so do you guys remember the superpowers toys like batman yeah, yeah. robin yeah so <clears throat> right after we opened we had a gentleman come in he told me he was the toy manager at kmart in the 80s at a, at a nearby kmart and he came in with every figure and the big hall of justice place set all in the box nothing was open 
and he came in, you know, I, I was like, are you showing us these? Are you selling them? Like, I didn't know what they were. I didn't even know in my mind what they were worth. You know, I just knew they were obviously valuable. They're toys from the 80s, still steel. So he told us a price that he was comfortable with. He sold them to us. He was happy. Uh, and we took them home and we started looking them up. And there was some pretty significant toys there. But there was one somebody offered us $1,600 for. Uh, wow. The superhero's name is Cyborg. I don't know. He's like all chromed out. Oh, looking. yeah. He's in yeah. He's in Zack Snyder's Justice League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so there you go. So uh, we didn't end up doing it because it was just kind of a hairy situation. The guy lived across the country, had no references, whatever. But yeah. um, the going rate for the toy is about 1500 So that's probably the most like expensive single toy I think we have in the store. But we definitely have a ton of toys that are in the three, four, five, six hundred dollar and you know, Transformers and stuff like that. Um Transformers in the package from the eighties, like stuff like wow. that. Yeah. So, so so how do you how do you when you say you go and you you clean out these houses or you'll yep. go, how do you get in touch with these people? Do you uh so, you know, what's, the, what's the line of communication here to do that? So honestly, Nat, so Nat, when we first started our page, obviously we were kept posting, we buy toys, like hit us up. But um, our biggest two things is people either come in the store with stuff, you know, it might be a, it might be a backpack with two toys in it, or it might be somebody who has 10 totes full of toys and uh, we'll buy it off from right there cash. Sometimes they want to trade, you know, if they bring in some stuff, oh, I'll trade you for a bet. Some guy came in the other day and gave us a bunch of wrestling stuff and all he wanted was the He-Man battle cap, just the cap, you know? <laughs> So we're like, yeah, you're going to give us 20 action figures for one toy? Sounds like a good deal to me. I don't know what they're worth, but I'm sure more are, you know, equal. What, were um, there any Antonio the Promised Thomases in there? <laughs> oh, man. Hey, you know what's funny? We sold a Zack Ryder figure on Sunday. We've had it since we've opened. <laughs> wow. I thought I, I thought I was going to, like, I, I wanted to take a picture of it and put a funny caption, but I was like, ah, it's sold, so now I can't talk shit, you know? Hey, there's a there's a Nick Gage figure that's coming out. I saw. Did you see that? Wait, so, uh, who's making that figure? Zombie Sailor's his name. He's uh he actually hired the original artist from Hasbro to sketch out all the figures, and uh, we ordered his first set for the toy store. He's 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 really going above and beyond. I think that dude's putting up like six figures to basically release these toys and try to you know get them out there. So it's pretty cool. But he's going about it the right way. So that's why it's costing so much. Wow, wow. But Nick Gage, now, Nick Gage just got added to his set. Yeah. Here's the uh, the Otani one. It's about. Yeah, that's it's a couple three dollars. It's just a normal. It's a normal. That that middle answer. one though, that's a nineteen. I want to say seventy four model. So those are just really they're just nice, beautiful they're looking cars. Yeah, I love them exactly. I wish, uh, I wish there could be a whole complete set like the the Dahlbeck one from eighty six. Totally, any that would of be those. awesome. Any of those. I feel like that I never so left awesome. the card game. Looking at these cards, I feel like right. I never left. Yeah, so the same. Oh, Ryan right. Sandberg. I remember him. There we go. There we go. Hey, Dude, I so, remember his he was hot when he came out when he was a rookie. Yeah. Right. No, so was, people were talking was, about him. He was the MVP, I think, in 84. Yeah. Um, that's when the Cubs won uh, won the division. Yeah, then he retired and he came back like three years later yeah. and was uh I always like Ryan Sandberg. Great. You know what great, the great Giants fans have a little bit of a love hate with Ryan Sandberg because uh, our second baseman and my favorite player of all time by the name of Robbie Thompson. Yeah, yeah. Defensively, he didn't get the same credit that Sandberg did. Now, uh, back in the day, it's it's <sighs> less like this now, but back in the day, the gold glove was based off of like fielding percentage as a statistic, and, and nobody <clears throat> uses that anymore. But the saying, and I want to say it was Bob Brenly who came up with this saying, he said, Ryan Sandberg has to dive for balls that Robbie Thompson can get on his feet. So we right. have a little bit of a love hate thing going on with Sandberg. Cause he overshadowed our boy. That was kind of like Jeter. Jeter wasn't really the best defensive shortstop, but he made fantastic, you know, he made spectacular plays, but he'd screw up the routine was, <laughs> I think if, if you remember those, those four great shortstops in the AL in the nineties, the best all around one might've been Miguel Tejada. Mm who was right in Oakland, I think. Uh, I think Giants it was the had late in M his career. MVP one year. Yeah. Hey, Teddy, let's talk, as we start to wrap things up here, let's cool. talk about this uh, <clears throat> American Rana pretty much one week uh, one week from now. Uh, you and, and Matt Cardona, formerly Zack Ryder, obviously a huge, huge uh, wrestling 
figures collector. What, you know, there's, there's some war words going on here on Twitter. The, the, toy, I, the, toy, the toy war is real. He actually is trying to go buy some stuff that I'm going to be picking up. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> this is, so. so yeah, so this is, this is like uh, wrestling promoters coming in on each other's territory here. Yeah, This yeah, is a yeah. blood feud here over, over <laughs> the toys. Now, I know that he tweeted out, we were texting the other day, he goes, if he wins, he gets a free shopping spree at your store. Yeah. But then you wrote back with some more words. So how did this how did this whole situation come about? You know, I, I don't know, but it's kind of crazy because it really worked out in my favor because between this whole match unfolding and the Mark that guy Mark Sterling being involved and everything else, like Matt Cardona basically reinvented himself in his career. Just more people are talking about him now than at least than they have since at least that you when he was doing the YouTube videos yeah. and he was really starting to break out. So I gave him kudos, man. And honestly, it's between Beyond Wrestling giving me a platform to finally start getting my name out there on a bigger stage. Now I'm getting in the ring with one of the most talked about guys in independent wrestling, probably the most talked about right now, you know? Yeah, he is. You know, I, I'm i not a deathmatch guy. I don't like yeah. deathmatches. Nick Gage was my tag team partner. I have no <laughs> problem saying, hey, yeah. you, you know, you, you've seen us wrestle. We, we wrestle. We have wrestling matches. Yeah, but Matt Card, I give Matt Card. I will. I do not want to do a death match. I never want to yeah. do one. I give Matt Cardona credit for the shit that he had to go through in that match. Oh, yeah, hundred percent. If, if you listen to what he had to go through after the match on the plane ride home and the week after having to deal with that, but between that and between obviously with the 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 you know that has boosted the majors figures business it was definitely uh, I, I guess if you had that it was worth it like, yeah you know what i mean yeah. like no one could propose that to me or you like hey if you do this match like it's gonna have a life-changing positive effect you know what i mean financially right, right, and it, right. you'd be like ah, i don't know i think i'm just gonna get sliced up or whatever <laughs> and, and you know what i mean people are gonna be talking on something else in a week but it definitely I, took him to the next level yeah i had him on the the audio show back in january and then I tried to get him on for this show to talk some because he collects graded wrestling cards. Yeah. He's he barely has time for his own his yeah. own podcast. So this is a big, you know, you had a phenomenal people go go watch Chris Dickinson versus Teddy Goods from Beyond Wrestling. I think it was like two months ago. And yeah. you had uh you had a great match against VSK. You had a match that I really liked against Aaron Wark, another nice. uh guy from that area create a pro guy great great talent you've yeah. been on a roll here you're in the we both been at it 20 years man and you're you're hitting your yeah, the, sure. the best is yet to come and this is i think so man a, bit, i feel like i'm hitting my yeah you're, i'm definitely hit, i'm hitting my second win for sure you know and i asked beyond wrestling i just asked for an opportunity in fact before the whole pandemic started i i offer i said to drew hey i'll come wrestle for free on the show if you like what you see or the crowd likes it, just please bring me back. And then, you know what I mean? Pay me going forward. And pandemic obviously happened and nothing came of it. But then a year and a half later, he started using me and he's obviously paid me ever since. And I've been on every show. And this idea of like the whole Toy Store Wars thing, like it was cool. And like the idea of wrestling Zack Ryder at the time, the formerly known as like, oh, cool. I'll get like a rub off of it. The toy, the toy store will get a rub from it. But then when I saw what was happening with GCW, and I had like an inkling he was going to potentially be winning the belt. I was like, well, now this is going to take my exposure to a whole other level, you know? And now the store. What, now is the GCW title on the line? I don't think so. I don't even think they're going to propose that. I don't think the Broski <laughs> would be down. You know? I think he's I charging extra to have the GC, GCW Probably. title there. Yeah, and he's, I think troll, it, he's trolled perfectly with the... Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know? So, um, and you know, Garrett... Uh, Side note here, Teddy's really, you can tell he's really good at, at, uh, he's really good at doing podcasting video stuff. He used to host the Biff and Ted's <laughs> excellent podcast adventure Wow, with Biff Busick, who, you know, as Oni Lorkin. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah former yeah. roommates, former roommates. Yep. Yes, yeah. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was just thinking of that today, you know, the good old I love days. That. I love that show. Because it was fun. It was 
Is that still on uh, iTunes? He made me take so, it down. He was afraid that he oh, might have said something oh, that would come back and bite him. We don't, we yeah, don't remember, you know. So yeah, we don't remember. It never happened. Forget it. It never happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but I have all the files. So I was actually thinking about that today. I was like, oh man, like, you know, down the line when he's retired, I can just post all these on YouTube. You know, archive them. You know. Yeah. So. so. Oh, I have. I had one more thing I wanted to show you guys. Okay. Um, I'm not. I'm not really a memorabilia collector, and if this isn't a toy or a card, but. I was opening my case to take that Rocky thing, and I uh, I saw this one thing that I think is definitely one of a kind, irreplaceable. Maybe it's the most valuable thing I have because to me it's one of a kind. But it was given to me by a friend, and this is from the man himself, Road Warrior Animal. It's a spike from his shoulder pad. <laughs> oh, 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 wow! Pretty crazy, right? Yeah. So, and now that you're saying if Zach uh, Cardona wants to get crazy, I could always whip this bad boy out, you know. Hey, Give him the old dusty roads. <laughs> who's got the, who's got, does Ricard still own the Max Moon outfit? Who owned that thing? Yeah, he does. He still has it. Yep. Okay, Max remember, Moon was looking for it. Re, oh, cause I remember it was, it was a show. I wrestled uh, Nunzio in 2013 and yep. in the, the PAL fall river down in the basement. I, someone gave me the Max Moon shorts and I put them on. I have a, uh. a picture in the Max Moon sh uh shorts then the next day uh there was a bunch of us on like a panel and paul diamond was i on took it. a picture of you next to max moon i have the photo i gotta send it oh, to yes, you yes 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 that's right that's but, right. yeah uh i saw paul diamond a couple of years ago and he had a whole new set of gear made to do appearances oh man no was that paul diamonds or was that conan's no, uh, i think it was paul diamonds because he was working for a promoter in vermont and canada and then he couldn't make a date or something, and he told the promoter, like, oh, just keep the suit and put, like, a local guy in it. And then I guess the suit never got returned. And fast forward 15 years later, it's Steve Ricard's got some 90-pound guy cartwheeling in it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, man. So, so Gary, back, you, no, oh, I do have one more question, though. Go, go ahead. ahead. Do you have a Holy Grail piece, both personally and for the store, that you're like – if I ever find this thing and it is priced reasonably, I'm getting it. No, no questions asked. You know what I guess would probably be, and I never even had one as a kid. I always had like the hand-me-downs, but you know, like the big LJN rubber figures, the rest WWF figures. Maybe if somebody brought like the ring and the cage, like in the original packaging or something, that would be kind of cool. I've never seen that in person, you know, or like, uh, one of those Hasbro rings, you know, the first edition, like the box is so nice. Um, I know Jason Allen, Jason Blade has like all that stuff, like, and then some, you know, the LJN he, stuff. He, I think he, I think he has LJN too. I, he's got a pretty serious collection. Wow. Like what is above um, and beyond. Do you get a lot of GI Joe stuff? We have a ton. Cause my cousin is a super GI Joe snob. So we have hundreds of GI Joes. I had, I had the battleship. Okay. I had it, uh, it took up half of my parents' living room. Oh, the flag, whatever they call it there. Yeah, USS that's crazy. Flag. Yeah. yeah, I used yeah. to. I used to have every figure because I would have my own wrestling federation with the figures. Because you oh, yeah. could get, you could do yeah. submissions with them because the swivel arm battle. I used to do the same thing with my cousin. I mean, my my brother. We'd have them all wrestle each other because you could move them so much. All the appendages, you know. Yeah. Um. But the USS Flag, that thing in the box is like wow. Big five box. to ten thousand dollars. Yeah. It's, oh yeah. It's, yeah. it's a lot. So, yeah. Um, so Garrett, what did we, so we got the, um, the Otani cards. Uh, I saw you put up a Manny Machado there. Yeah. Any there other? was, there was no autographs or anything. No. Just, just some cool looking stuff. And, and that's, you the know, I, I just shared the, the ones that, you know, you would probably pop at. So that's, and that's the fun in it. Trying to find the, uh, um, trying to find the autograph cards, those yeah. Holy grail cards. So, all right. So, Teddy, where can viewers here at the Wrestling Observer here on the, the YouTube page, where can they – do you have a website? I know you have an Instagram, uh, Twitter account. Where can people reach you and go to Kojo's to, to possibly buy stuff and to check out all the stuff sure. you have? Uh, if they want to go to Kojo's, we're on every form of uh, social media as Kojo's Toy World. You can how, go do you, to Kojo's how do you spell it? C-O-J-O. C O J O Kojo's Toy World, or you can go to Kojo's Toy World.com and I believe that forwards right to our Facebook page. 
Um, and then for myself, I'm uh, I'm under Ted Goods basically on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. I do have a YouTube page or some matches with us on there. Um, oh no, not the one from uh, no, not the one from uh, the soccer place there. And oh, that's a that's, that's a heavily worst, viewed. That's, that's a heavily the, viewed one. You should you got to go read the comments on that one, dude. <laughs> with, with the, the little ten year old who is the ring announcer. Yes. Oh you know, no, so, take that dude. down. <laughs> So you know who that that ten year old announcer is, right? Jordan something. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah. He goes to all the Beyond shows. Okay. Yeah. Oh, he's like Anthony Green. He was like running promotions when he was like eight. Yeah, I I was but... booked on his show. Um, the, oh no, that's was, the uh... worst. That's the worst match ever. I was just, like, we've had yeah, gonna... we wrestled each other about ten times, and it's yeah. all, we've always had fun. We always have good matches. No, oh, that was bad. Take that down. But there's some there's there's, <laughs> there's some other there's some other matches with us on there that are pretty good. Okay. Pretty bad, All so. right. All right. Um but yeah, so YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Ted Goods, and uh that's it. I'm pumped. I appreciate you guys having me on the show. It was fun to talk about yeah. the good old uh, uh, card days. American Rana, August twenty seventh, next Sunday. Yeah. August twenty second, I'm sorry. Uh yeah. next Sunday. Go to IWTV.live and uh you can go there. They got all different promo codes on there. Um, tons, all the independent wrestling you can you can watch. Um, they just well, had a, it. they just had their anniversary show. They had a sixty minute uh, time limit match with Wheeler Yuta and Daniel Garcia, two phenomenal workers. And uh, go check it out on there. Go check out Teddy versus Matt Cardona and Garrett. You have your hands in so many things you got so many patreons going podcasts going video shows going what do you got going on yeah I mean, you know you can just follow us at fight game media um we have a patreon patreon.com front slash fight game media but yeah you know just doing stuff here like i have the um the video show with andrew zarian and denise salcedo on this channel uh, called We're Live, Pal. So we do that every Tuesday. And at some point when your schedule is free, you're going to come hang out and sit in our fourth chair. I'm, my wife is due pretty much any day. So, yeah. So, like um, three so, months from now, you'll, you'll be free. <laughs> you, you might be free for an hour. So I told, usually I coach on uh, Tuesdays, is one of the days I coach, but my, my gym is, you know, an hour away. So I'm not going to be there for an, who, who knows, maybe till 2023. Mm. So uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll be around, but yeah, I'd love to be on soon. So yeah, but that's it. You know, we'll figure just out do... when well, my little dude's about seven or eight. Well, well then there. he's going to be hosting this show. Then he'll be host. He'll be like Jordan, <laughs> Jordan and Anthony green. So, oh, man. all right. And you can find me uh, at promise Thomas on Twitter at retro grappler. Um, I'm, you can message me for bookings. If you want, I got some stuff lined up. I'm not really going anywhere for the next month. So message Teddy instead. So hit him up there because <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be in demand, but, uh, we thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back in the next few weeks with another episode and for Teddy, for Garrett, I'm promise saying, see ya.